Let us talk about the Levels filter. You can find it in Filter, Adjust, and Levels. But you can also press the Ctrl L keyboard shortcut to call it up. It is split into two parts, which allow you to control what are called the input and output levels. To make it simpler, the top part allows you to increase the contrast of your image. The bottom part allows you to modify the range of the values that gets out of the filter. So looking at the top part, let me show you how it works. First of all, the graph shows you the levels of your image for every value, that is for every possible grayscale tone that you can find in your image, you get a little line, a little chart line that tells you how much of it you can find in there. So it's basically an analysis of your image's value range. You can see that there are lots of bright tones in my picture on the bottom layer. And by glancing at the image, you can see that that's true. The picture is very bright overall, and there aren't too many very dark values in there. Now, take a look at what happens if I pull the black up. The image gets darker and more contrasted. Here's how it works. You will see the ramp at the top, and this is the value range of my image. And the ramp at the bottom gets modified, and you can see that there's a lot more black on the left. Well, my value range here, from black to white, will get compressed from here, that corresponds to a dark gray, to white. All of the colors will be made darker. You can see there's a lot more dark on the left. If I pull the white to the left, you can see that my image gets brighter every time. And you have the second layer, the base colors, that don't get modified for reference. You can see how much the contrast of my image changes. So this works the other way around. I'm taking the whole value range and I'm compressing the whites to the left, meaning a lot more values here will be a lot brighter and all of the other values will get slightly brighter. And now you have a last value in the middle that will scale your grays and blacks and whites towards blacks or towards whites. If you pull that slider to the right, the central values in the image will get darker and a bit more contrasted as well. And if you pull it to the left, everything will get lighter. You can use the graph at the top to know about up to where you should pull the whites I can see that there are not too many blacks and there's a whole area where the whites are really dull in here. So if I pull the whites to the left, I'm going to increase the overall brightness of the image. But as there weren't too many blacks, if I leave that slider to one, the picture gets a bit blown up. Going back to the levels filter, I'm going to pull the whites here, but I'm also going to pull the grays towards the whites to really retain the darkness in the image. If we use the preview checkbox, this is with the filter on, and this is with the filter off. You can see how much the levels enhance the contrast of my image. And by both adding whites and compensating them by pulling the grays towards the whites, the image just gets more contrasted. It doesn't get that much brighter. Now we have to talk about the output levels. These work differently from the part at the top. The bottom ramp shows you your output values. So the bottom ramp will get mapped to the top one. You can see black up to that point. Well, all of these blacks in my picture will get mapped to dark grays at the top. This means, the slider, that the minimal value will be the one from the ramp at the top. There won't be any blacks anymore in my picture. If I pull the whites down now, the picture gets darker. I'm going to pull it a lot, just so we see the effect very well. The white, the pure white, will get mapped to that middle gray, and all of the values in between black and white will get mapped to all of the values between pure black and middle gray. This slider 
basically controls the maximum value that you'll get in the image. And the slider on the left, the dark one, controls the minimal value that you'll get in the image. So this one you'll use less often, but it allows you to modify the value range of your image. The next filter is called Color Adjustment. Press Ctrl M to open it up. Just like the Levels filter, this one allows you to modify the contrast of your image. But you can do so using a curve like this. It also allows you to modify the individual color channels of your image. The red, the green, the blue, but also the alpha, and more importantly, the lightness of your image. So you can make your image lighter or darker while retaining the colors without boosting the contrast too much. That is something the levels filter cannot do. Let me explain how it works. There are two ramps around the graph. You have a horizontal one and a vertical one. The horizontal one represents your input values and the vertical one represents your output values. If I pull this point here, you can see that my input value is black and if I pull it up, the image gets lighter and lighter. Doing this is the same thing as pulling the output slider, the black, in the levels filter. What I'm saying is take the black as input and output me a mid-gray. Everything that's black and above will be mid-gray and above in the end. That's why the image gets lighter. If we pull the point in the top right and lower it down, you can see that I'm taking white as input and I'm mapping it to middle gray and everything in between white and black will be mapped between middle gray and black, making the image that much darker. So now the interesting part and the thing you cannot do with levels that you can do with the curves very easily is that you can add a point anywhere by clicking and dragging on the curve and then you can change the curve in here. That curvature will add contrast in a certain area of the range. What you can do, for instance, if I'm placing a point in the corner here, I'm more or less keeping the dark values as they are. And by moving this other point from 25% gray to full white, I'm slowly increasing their value and then moving back to the whites which get retained. So you can use that to add slight contrast in certain parts of your value range. It's a bit technical, it will take a bit of time to get your head wrapped around it, but this is a very powerful tool. When you have a line from one corner to the next that go right in the middle of the grid, this means that your values get preserved in that range. Then, in the parts where you start to have a curve, your contrast will increase. The curves are really smooth, so don't hesitate to add a second control point to ensure that you have a line that doesn't move in there. Having these corner points means that I'm preserving the dark area of my image and now I can start to increase or reduce the contrast only in my image's highlights. Now, as I told you, the interesting thing is that you can also work on the lightness and note that you can work on the lightness on top of using the other channels individually. So you can work on all of these options individually in the filter and all of the effects will get added to one another. If I boost the lightness or I reduce it, it makes my image darker or lighter, but it won't touch on the colors. Unlike the RGBA, which is going to broadly increase your contrast, you're only increasing not your color contrast, but your value contrast or decreasing it. I'll make a comparison so that you can clearly see the difference. If I'm pulling down that corner point down here in RGBA mode, and here on that second layer, I'm going to only do that with the lightness channel. Now let's compare. On the top layer, I've done the modification on the RGBA channel. I've pulled the colors down 
This added contrast in the dark value range and it also made everything much darker. But you can see how the colors are blown out. Here is the result by working only on the lightness slider. The colors get somewhat preserved. You don't have those blown out reds and purples in there. So you'll have to learn to use these to modify the contrast and the value range of your paintings. The color adjustment filter has one more property that's very useful and very important for game art. If you open it with Ctrl M and you go to the alpha channel, you will be able to modify the opacity of your pixels. I have two layers. I have a gradient, a soft gradient, over a pure white layer. So there's transparency information in this layer. Look at what happens when I start to play with the alpha value. You can see that when I pull the points, pixels become more and more opaque. I can use that curve to modify how my soft gradient looks, and that's extremely useful because you can tweak the anti-aliasing of a layer and you can also achieve all sorts of softer or stronger effects like this one. Often, if you have a sprite that is a bit dirty around the edges, that has a few transparent pixels floating around, you can pull that bottom left point to the right and you can see that it will tend to erase pixels that are too transparent. And then you can use the curve a little to tighten the edges. It's a very handy tool for game sprite creation. With the last filter, color adjustment, we had a way to modify only the lightness of our image. Now we need a filter to only tweak the colors. There is one that's dedicated to that, that you can also find in the adjust category, and that's called color balance. You can press Ctrl B to call it up. This one shows a lot of sliders, but don't be afraid because it's basically three times the same thing. You have three categories, shadows, midtones, and highlights, that are three different value ranges in which you will apply the filter. So it works as such. You have three sliders that allow you to respectively pull values towards cyan or red, magenta or green, and yellow or blue. If you think about it, on the left, you have the three primary colors we use for painting. And on the right, you have the three primary colors we use to represent pixels on the computer. This is RGB, and this is CMY, which is used for printing as well, and the CMYK color definition. But that's not too important for us. The important part is that we can pull our colors towards more turquoise, or add more red, we can add more purple or magenta, or have them lean towards green. We can also add some yellow to brighten the mood of our image, or pull them towards blue to make them look a bit more cool. I'll click on the Reset Shadows button to reset the sliders, and we'll look at what happens if I go work on the midtones. You can see that a different set of pixels get affected when I move the sliders. If I do the same operation on the shadows, it's mostly the darker pixels in my image that get modified. And if I try the same operation on the highlights, you can see that only the very light pixels in my image get changed. So this separation between shadows, midtones, and highlights is pretty fine, but it's quite useful for natural photos, pictures, or paintings with a realistic lighting. It really allows you to work on the shadows or to work on the very bright areas of your pictures and to, for instance, add some yellow in the bright parts, add some blues in the dark parts to add some more color contrast. If you look at the result here, working separately on the shadows and the highlights, this is before and after the effect was applied, we get a better color contrast now that I've added a bit of yellow in the highlights and a bit of blue in the shadows.